Hey everybody, Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols here with a tactical fitness report and today we are going to talk a little bit about hypertrophy and strength training. In fact, we got a great question. Well, I got a great question and Jeff got a real stupid question, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm going to just, I'm gonna, I'm know, just right? start it off with a stupid question because it was awesome. And it's not a, a, well, it's stupid, but it's just a misinformed question, right? Yeah. So basically somebody asked Jeff the other day was, uh, will my muscles get bigger if I do a hypertrophy program? Yeah. Okay. That's just not thoroughly understanding what hypertrophy is because the definition yeah. of hypertrophy means muscle growth. Yeah. You have increased it, tissue, all that. Yeah. I'll get, so to our point is we're, we're here to educate. So that's what yes. we're going to do. Yes. So we got a better formed question, which was, um, in fact, I'll read it directly. It says, does hypertrophy training have a place when preparing for buds? Wouldn't strength training be better? I yeah. thought that was a really good question. Right? So it's, a, it's a very circular, rational sort of statement, question, idea. And, it's, it's, and so we understand where that's coming from. So what we'll do is we'll explain, mm -hmm. you know, that, the, the, I guess, the, the minutia of, the, of what it is, like what the difference is and why someone might be confused by that statement. Yeah, let's, or, let's, take, let's do this. Let's take a little journey of a typical kid. Um, I say kid, I say teenager, middle teens, right? That is thinking about um, going into the weight room, getting bigger, maybe even having, you know, spec ops goals in his future, right? But he's got two or three years before he can even pull that trigger. So let's, let's build this guy, right? Yeah, so sure. I would say this, you know, hypertrophy means muscle growth, just like we said at the beginning of, the, of this uh, podcast. So whatever you do, pretty much if you're a teenage boy, you are in a hypertrophy phase regardless of if you are lifting or not, right? You're growing, right? Yeah. You're, you are growing every day. So, you know, doing calisthenics would be a hypertrophy style training for you. That is yeah. a good way to start. A, I call it the almost the fitness foundation. In fact, I have a 16-year-old son. And when he was 13, we started doing calisthenics and just do it. Well, he did martial arts. So we did some calisthenics doing that, but mm -hmm. we started doing calisthenics as a workout, right? Not involved with martial arts or sports or warm ups and, you know, things like that. This was a an actual workout and it was just a, the typical push up, pull up pyramid, you know, and the cool thing about the pyramid is, you know, Every week that you do it, you see a little progress. You know, you get up to six and you get up to seven, you get up to eight. Next thing you know, yeah. you're one ten down to one and you've done a hundred pull-ups in a workout, and that's pretty darn impressive. That's a lot of volume, especially for a volume. younger kid. Yeah. A truly. lot of volume. And guess what happened to him? His biceps got bigger, <laughs> his back got bigger, his chest got bigger, his shoulders got bigger. Everything. Yeah. Grip got better. Like, and yeah. that's so I think that for me, if I may just step in for a second, I, I Certainly, I know what I'm, I'm kind of known for and, and kind of the way I deliver some information. Um, but just this is where me, I'm going to step back for a second and answer this is like, this is where Stu and I constantly say, hey, it depends. But this is a really good one where we say, like, based on your where you're at and trying to develop yourself, right? Now we can, you can start this individual we're talking about and this, this, this uh, hypothetical person kind of, which there's a lot of people that are actually like this. This is where we're saying, you know, the, the stimulus you put yourself into, right, begins initially about, you know, what's your age, what's your experience and those sort of things. And so that's where it's like, yeah, if we get somebody that may not need to do a hypertrophy style program because they were a prior you know, offensive lineman kind of thing. And so now, but for someone that's very new to it, right? We think, well, why would we have them do calisthenics and, and just not do a true hypertrophy program? Because the reality is, is like when we're, you know, especially the programs that I and Stu put out, some are for beginners, some are not. But what, what a beginner doesn't usually have the concept of is yet, is understanding really even following a hypertrophy program based on percentage and stimulus because they don't have enough time under a bar yet. And that is why when you really start working body weight stuff, 
you start figuring out a lot of things other than I can get better. You really start thinking about, well, this hand grip position is better for me. This, my feet here when I do pull-ups feels better. And, and you start figuring stuff out. And because you can figure stuff out with your own body first, right? It's such a challenge. We get a lot of hypertrophy, you get gains very, very quickly. And that's why we're saying, hey, if you're a beginner, you know, that's what I mean. It's just straight to the last point. It's to the context of like a lot of schools are going away from physical education, right? Where, um, and that's where we're not, kids aren't getting exposed to that, those calisthenics through a lot of grade school and high school. And so now they're like, I, I, they're under the gun, they're under the eight ball. And so a lot of people will avoid uh, calisthenics initially because they're like, oh, my friends are lifting weights. Calisthenics are hugely valuable for hypertrophy and for, and for strength for a beginner. Yep, absolutely. So, oh, let's, let's do this. Let's take this, um, this question, right, and answer it a little more specifically and say, here's the deal. Here's the phases that you need to worry about if you are fairly new to the weight room. Let's say you're an endurance athlete that needs to put on some mass or you're just a hard gainer. Mm -hmm. And you need to put on some mass. You're in this journey. You got a couple of years to uh, prepare yourself. And, and that's why, you know, we always say give yourself time to prepare because this is a multi-phase journey of putting on mass. Yeah. Right. I mean, how many years did it take for you to put on mass? Yeah. I mean, when you were growing up. I mean, yeah. And then like really hold it. And that's the thing too is like, you know, we can get some very acute changes, but really for your body to go, hey, yes, I've gained weight. I've got all this mass because here's, here's the underlying of the question, right, Stu? It's like, well, hypertrophy, I know it's mass, it's build, I, but is that going to slow me down? The answer is you, the desired, the, 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 what, you, what you don't want to happen is what will happen is if you, yeah, you do the hypertrophy right away, for example, and you're like, oh, I'm going to expect to have um, to be able to have the same run capacity. Now, you can be heavier and run faster. It's just that your body has got to get used to that extra weight. Yes. So don't think like, oh my God, I got slower. Well, and when your body, if you, like Stu's saying, if you give yourself the right timeline to work and allow these not just changes to happen, but when the change begins, you've got to adapt to the change. And that is when you really have created real sustainable change. So right. again, it's like you put the practice in, you might not see the practice really be real learned sort of behavior, even when you get done with the program, you know what I mean? A 12 week or six week program, like, well, I think I've gained weight, but I'm not really seeing these mm -hmm. benefits. Well, you still got to adapt. Your body's still got to adapt to the additional weight and size. So, you know, just keep that in mind. That's what we're saying is, trying to be patient is hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. And so like understanding, you know, work on building tissue first and then, cause that's the question is then we got to, okay, even hypertrophy, are we technically mathematically getting stronger? Yes. Mm -hmm. But to develop real strength. And that's what we're going to talk about now, right? It's like, we've gotten the calisthenics in. Now I want to say, Hey, let's like, why would we focus on hypertrophy first, Stu? Like, that's, let me get your take. Why? Why hypertrophy? Oh, yeah. Why are we differentiating between the two? Why are we saying, well, Jeff, they're the same thing. No, no. They, there's overlap. Yes. To these things, but there is a distinct difference. And, and Stu, I'll give, give, give me your, t your, t your take on, like, why do this before for someone yeah. needing it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, like I said, we've gone through that calisthenic base building exercise phase which could be several months you know just of doing that sure. could be a year right especially if you're mixing in sports and things like that because you can't really focus on a true hypertrophy phase or a strength phase because you're doing a lot of other stuff so you know a strength phase may just be you know a six to eight week cycle thrown into your year somewhere but you can gr you can grow with both strength phases and hypertrophy phases, you will get bigger, you will get stronger. You do a little bit of both, but I think the, to differentiate the two, I, I've always looked at it like this. Like if I'm trying to put on muscle mass, which was the last thing I wanted to do when I went to Bud's, I didn't yep. need anymore. I think I had developed my body to a level where, unless I was going to be a bodybuilder, 
I wasn't putting on any right. more muscle mass. Hit, it hit the point where it's like any more is going to be a detriment potentially. Right. And I just so happened to have enough strength to, I thought was good enough. Now I needed to work on some more cardiovascular endurance. But if you're that guy that needs to put on some mass, a hypertrophy phase first makes a lot of sense. And that can be a mix of calisthenics and lighter, high repetition um, uh, weight training, whether that's dumbbells or barbells, you know, it's kind of up to you how you want to uh, master those activities. I've always do this. If you really want to gain weight, you look at your bigger muscles in your body because those will really help you spur growth in all areas. So that means your butt, 100%. your legs, yes. but your legs, your back. Yep. You know, that posterior chain we can call it and you know that uh, those muscles there will spur the rest of your body to to gain muscle mass yeah you know. truly yeah because it, it, it just to get a little bit nerd on you the more fibers that you put in contraction at a single time the more hormonal response you're going to get so again when Stu was saying legs right when you squat for example or your leg press or um ruck march and lunge like your legs not only are working but your back is supporting that additional weight and you get those big muscle groups contracting contracting you get more hormonal response i.e more testosterone now the yeah, flip side of it too is we get more cortisol and some you know muscle damage again that's the recovery piece we're talking about that over and over we have so I, just from a layman standpoint so you understand like hypertrophy yeah we say it's increased tissue more muscle whatever it is but it's also the healing side of it too so you so coming off of a deployment coming off of a season where you need to heal and repair that's where that also going to fit in and that so i say that because this give you a little more insight of the difference of the two right we're talking hypertrophy we're trying to gain or increase tissue without the detriment of the rest the body right because we're trying to put it all in increased tissue strength is think of more as contraction force like how do i exert more force into something well that's why hypertrophy precedes that hypertrophy will increase the size of the muscle fibers but what it doesn't do as well as heavier weight strength training right because that's where the difference happens a little bit yep. is the brain is saying hey this is heavier. I need to put more force into these muscle fibers to move this object or the body. Hypertrophy, again, going back is more like, okay, it, it's your body or a bit more, a, per, a percentage of her where you can cover a great amount of distance or reps. So the reps and distance precedes contraction force. So that's why we do hypertrophy first mm -hmm. to develop the muscles, get it ready get it ready to receive more force, i.e. strength training, okay? And so that's where you start putting in your head and go, oh, that's why you're a young person, they can't lift heavy weights very well relative to their body weight even. You go, oh, I can't, well, because they haven't developed the muscle, they haven't prepared the field, the muscle fibers yet. They haven't began to increase the size of those muscle fibers, so it can, it's an engine of a car, bigger engine, more force. Yeah. And that's what hypertrophy is. And so that's why you can kind of put the cart before the horse because we always say, I get stronger, got to get stronger, got to get stronger. So a lot of people will do There's There's so many good strength programs out there. The five, three ones, the threes of tens or whatever they are, yep. you know, the five of fives the list goes on and on for good strength. It's just a lot of times the younger athletes have not prepared their muscle fibers to get the maximal benefit out of the strength side. Yeah, you know, when I look at, in hindsight, my journey, you know, back in the 80s, it was bodybuilding style workouts, mm -hmm. which for a young teenager working out at 14 years old, doing bodybuilding style workouts actually was kind of smart. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you developed. I, was doing, I yeah. was doing calisthenics. I was doing uh, dumbbell work. I was starting to bench and do some basic squats, uh, but nothing crazy, just more repetitions. And then finally, when I had a coach in high school that were actually strength coaches, you know, for sports that just, I came in there with a good foundation to build on. And then I was able to get a lot stronger. You bet. You know, yeah. And that, I think that's that, the journey. 
because I think that what's kind of like when you and I grew up just now or I can really give this much thought, but think about the people we looked up to. Granted, they were strong, right? The, the Dorian Yates, the Lee Haney's, they were very, very strong because a yeah. lot of those guys came from a powerlifting background too. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, but we see those guys like the, like the Arnold pumping iron scene rep after rep after rep. So there was this bit of a glorification for high rep back when oh, we sure. grew up. Oh, now yeah. it's, it's, there's a lot of PR emphasis, you yeah. know? And so, and that's okay because admittedly seeing someone squat 500 pounds is way more sexy than seeing someone squat 300 pounds for 30 reps. True. It, it's, it, it plays out better in social media. It plays out <laughs> way better in a, in a snapshot. It plays out better in a conversation at times. So understandably like the, the social aspect of my weight training, what Stu and I are saying is like, Hey, PRs are cool. But for me, my personal PRs are not singles. They're like, okay, how many reps can I squat a a percentage of weight, right? Like, okay, if my one RM is X, I take 25% less of that. Now I'm going to take that weight and see how many reps I can do it for in a given time or break. It's like, I'm going to do three sets of max effort, right? Of squat uh, for one week and can't keep that number. Let's say it's 36. Well, instead of next week squatting more weight, I'm going to go, let's see if I can either keep that same weight and do it one or two more reps. I might change my set scheme to kind of manipulate that a little bit. You know, like the first rep, I might not do a full max effort. I might leave some bullets in the chamber, right? For example, or it's like, okay, I'm going to drop my weight 10% and see if I can do six extra reps per set. Right. I start manipulating going, okay, because for me, not that, it, not that I don't want to get strong, like the traditional strength, like single rep stuff, but I'm looking at from the tackle population going, granted, there are times they have to do maximal effort stuff, climbing, jumping now, but I'm looking at the job from my experience or from our experience going, well, a lot of times it's carrying a weight, you know, a weight that's 30 to 40% of my body weight, rucksack, helmets, guns, all that stuff. And I got to cover that over six, eight, 10, 12 kilometers and, or I'm going to be in movement off and on for eight hour day. For me, I'm looking at going, I need a little bit of everything, but I need, what I need more of is my ability to contract a moderate weight over a lot of distance and reps. And that's kind of where hypertrophy and calisthenics comes in. Oh yeah. That's a great way to put it. Um, I, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, for, for what I like to do and, you know, I have a system right? My annual seasonal system. And right now we're in a fall system. We're transitioning out of a high rep calisthenics running cycle. Um, But I tell you what, we had guys gain weight, but they had to eat a lot of food to gain weight, especially with the running that we were adding onto it. But it worked. They were still able to gain weight. They just ate constant. They were feeding the machine. Because there's there's an old saying, if you want to be big, you have to eat big. Eat, eat big, yep. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. lift big too. And but. then you're all your counter back, count, like right now, especially for those of you that are East Coast near Stu and I, the fall here between you and I is one of the most beautiful falls I've oh, ever it's been. Awesome. It's so amazing. And so, yeah, like it, it's such a good idea. Again, we're talking about cycling your training. And it's like people go, well, wait a minute. You know, here's another piece that we want to add to this hypertrophy. And for example, just use my programs as an example, right? My hypertrophy, my hypertrophy program is 12 weeks. My strength program is eight. Yep. And then the later on, we'll do on a power and speed is five. Well, the reason why that they're shorter in duration, simply put in most of them, most, most, most coaches are going to follow a similar trend of, of shortening their strength cycle. And that's because we're talking about, we're talking about improving force contraction it's more um, the central nervous system uh, takes a bit of more of a beating when you lift heavier weights, right? So you see more plateaus with guys like, man, I keep hitting this plateau. And I say like the first thing in my mind, I'm thinking, well, a lot of people, it's not that they're lifting poorly. It's that the, most people that aren't are hitting plateaus are lifting too heavy too often. Yeah. So the, the nervous system goes, oh, it, because so much trauma goes into putting in maximal force because the tendons, ligaments, and the muscles, and the nerves have to heal <clears throat> at a much, much more sort of a, I guess, less margin of error, right? When we're talking about strength and near absolute. Whereas hypertrophy, you're not that you're not stressing the system out as much, 
but because you're not approaching near maximal contraction, you're really living in the world of maximal fatigue. Yes. The Muscle healing stamina. process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your neural pathways aren't quite as damaged. I will call it that in the nerves as they are in strength side or right. real absolute powerlifting side. So having that concept in your head. That, so that gives my point of it is saying this is like when people hit a plateau, like and they're lifting heavier type weights, a really simple solution is just go, Hey, for the next two weeks, I'm going to train like a bodybuilder. Yes. And then go back to heavier training going, Holy crap. Cause now they've allowed the system to heal. Yep. They've continued to put the work in and then they're going to go back to it. Now they've healed the tissue now can exert a higher force because you've given it some time to rest. Yeah. I love that. That, you know, we, um, now that we're transitioning into the fall, we are mixing, it's about a 50, 50 split of calisthenics. We warm up with calisthenics and then we go and lift kind of a higher repetition thing. And, and throughout this next six to eight weeks, probably we will be transitioning, like I said, into a strength phase, but it's going to be, you know, these little sets of tens, little sets of 15s of, of yep. exercises, but we'll see if we can do multiple sets of that. You yes. know, can we get up to six sets? Can we get up to eights? You know, one of my favorites that I used to do as a teenager was 10 sets of 10. Yeah. I did 10 sets of 10 of everything. Yeah. That's why I follow people. Like I know there's five of five programs out there better for strength. Sure. But again, try some things like just try a push up pyramid, six of six, yep. seven of seven, eight of eight. And, I, and you'll go, you'll find a sweet spot without yeah. a doubt you will. And, and, and that's the thing too, is that's kind of, if you guys have run my programs, like especially the hypertrophy, you see these like six sets of 12, eight sets of nine. And you're like, all I'm trying to do is like a lot of volume. total that's math. Good, right? And you say, oh, he's doing 60 reps. Well, do I want to do six sets of 10? Especially when I'm hitting the wall at eight reps, right? Like, so, well, how do I get to 60? Well, eight sets of whatever mm -hmm. yeah. and try that. And because it, it's, you know, we, we want, people want order and they want organization in the weight room and totally understand that. And, and all we typically hear is those three mm -hmm. sets of tens and da, 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 da. like, we've got to get outside that box because we can only acquire so much workload when we're that, we don't, we only adhere to one methodology of like rep and set scheme. Right. right. You know what? Hey, that's a very good point because um, here's what happens to a guy who's used to like a high calisthenic running cycle. And then he transitions into a high repetition uh, combo mix of weights and calisthenics. And then they go into a strength cycle. Guess what? It's a strength cycle is really boring. Yeah. Because there's a lot of rest on in there. I mean, yeah. when I have the other phases going, it's all active rest. We are resting yeah. with another muscle group. If I'm doing bench press, we're resting with pull ups, right? <laughs> we are just constantly yeah. moving in those high repetition phases. But if I'm doing strength training, you, know, you do a bench press or you do a squat, you're going to kind of hang out for a little bit, you know, take a water break you know, yep, high five, you know, cause that's, that's how you get stronger. And it's hard for, for guys to wrap their head around it until we have this sort of conversation with folks. Yeah. And even then, cause you're like, man, that's kind of, it seems a bit counterintuitive that like, but what we're not saying is this, we are not saying that doing hypertrophy won't make you stronger. You will, will mathematically get. get stronger based on your ability to contract at a higher force merely because you have, larger muscle fibers yeah. that doesn't mean you, you you still aren't getting again it's also not to say that you're not going to gain size in a strength program either absolutely you're going right? to do both in both yep the, the, in, in a lot of times it's like in, in to be completely honest not to confuse people it's like you may not even be able to determine what your rep and set scheme is between the two for a while for some exercises because and especially for like the squat whereas many of us me included I don't gain a lot of size in my legs from squatting because I can't acquire enough volume with a bar on my back too much because my back gets too fatigued to maintain. And that's why it's so good to do lunges and belt squats and leg presses and stuff. Because I always look at something in the weight room. One is more geared towards acquiring the skill and maintaining it. And one exercises with the same movement patterns more towards the area of uh, acquiring volume. 
right? And that's what you see where Stu and I are so very similar. We just do it on different timelines, but sure. they're, they're guided, they're methodical, and they're programmed where it's like, we're, we're making sure that everyone gets these phases. Yeah. Because in the end, because in the end, Jeff, it really just depends. It does. So I have probably four guys in my group right now, which I am not even going to play around in a hypertrophy or strength phase. I mean, these guys are power strength guys. One's a professional athlete. Um, and you know, he needs to lose weight. You know, he yeah. need, he's going to be doing calisthenics and cardio throughout yeah. the winter. That's it right the there. Phase. Yeah. And he needs, he needs to go from 270 down to about 220, but he's all muscle. Right. And, good calisthenics are like the universal donor. Like yeah. it's the O positive of the training world. It's like, <laughs> and you see in my programs, you see them in Stu's programs, you see in programs all over the country that are running well. It's like, there's always, almost always in a training day, and probably almost always in a training week where you're seeing, you're seeing calisthenics, right? You're seeing, you know, step ups from a box. You're seeing pull ups. You're seeing push ups. You're seeing those things because, because in the end we're talking about natural human movement. So we that's one thing too from doing a hypertrophy and strength and calisthenics is like, because ultimately what we're trying to do is improve our movements under load, and so. That's where doing the hypertrophy, where we start to body starts to learn how to move additional mass. We gotta learn that before we put it to a place where it's like, yep, I learned how to swim because my grandma threw me in the in the pool and I learned to swim. Sink or swim. We don't want. We're not at that point where we're trying to sink or swim with strength. We don't want the sink or sink or swim mentality. Let's learn it under a mass or your body weight where you can afford to fail if that makes sense. Oh, sure. And we, cause it can be really demoralizing for a young athlete where they, they, they jump into a strength program of mine or something that's more advanced for you. So like instantly like, Oh my God, I can't do this. And if I can't do this, like, I can just see, see like the, the scary thought bubbles come out of their brain. They're like, Oh my God, can I be a seal? Is it, is this, what does this mean? What does this mean? It doesn't mean it means that you started at step B let's go to step A and then by the time you get to step B and you go, okay, I got this now, right? We're really trying to set you guys up for not only just physical success, but emotional success as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, let's answer, you know, the future bud students question. Um, but I mean, the answer is it, it truly depends, you know, yeah. do you need hypertrophy or do you need strength? Yeah. Some people need both. Some people don't need either. Yeah. Right. It just depends. You know, some people um, maybe need to do a little strength cycle, but they're already kind of built. They have built their muscles and they got a decent foundation of growth underneath it. You know, that yeah. they don't need to get bigger. I think where a lot of people have a problem with hypertrophy is they just think it's bodybuilding. Yeah. Right. And I did deadlifts yesterday. Hypertrophy deficit deadlifts with deadlift with the 225 pounds from a four inch deficit. I like it's those. Like, uh, yeah, because, because again, admittedly, just to break the mold go, guys, men and women, is that we, we admittedly look at deadlifting as this maximal effort, big, strong dude, blood's coming out of his nose, and he's got a fucking, uh, <laughs> uh, like a flame beanie on his head. Um, but like Chuck Vogelpohl, I'm just, if you guys know who that is right. anyway, but, but what we're saying is like, you will be really, really surprised and very, very happy if you take these, the bench press, the squat, the lunge, the deadlift, the pull-ups, and start breaking them up into repeatable bite-sized rep schemes. And again, it's like, well, what well, I'm doing, because here's the thing, is if you did three sets of 10, for example, the bar really slows down, you know, in those later reps. And now you're like, okay, for me to maintain that bar speed, I got to take these larger than I desire rest periods. Yep. And now you feel stagnant. It doesn't feel like you're getting stronger because you're waiting around. So instead of taking these long rest periods, what do we do? Let's do them in set schemes of set schemes of four and five that repeat themselves like after you, five or six reps, rest for 20 seconds, five or six reps, rest for 20 seconds, five or six reps, maybe rest for 25. And now you're really able to measure okay, what's my level of fatigue? It's like, I need to get 120 deadlifts, we'll say. Right. Well, how are we going to do that smartly? Think about it anyway. It's like, they're just, I want to assure all of you 
that deviating from a three of 10 or anything that even Stu and I put to where you guys can maximally or uh, optimally perform the task, then that is good. That's almost all, I say almost always, because I, I'd like to say always, but if you're performing the reps at a higher uh, or at a very consistent rep, you know, uh, speed as well as being able to maintain that movement pattern, you feel free to deviate from the rep and set scheme as long as you're hitting those numbers. Yeah. The Total volume reps. matters. Volume yeah. matters, especially yeah. in hypertrophy yes. and then strength. And not that it doesn't matter, but keep in mind is we, when you're talking about strength, we want you to really strain under the bar, like really strain because that is what that straining that, uh, is what tells the nervous system. Hey, we need to improve contraction force, not just, muscle fiber size yep absolutely so that's the difference Yep, that's the difference yeah. between hypertrophy. <laughs> so now they're gonna go Stu. what about power and speed we'll go that's for the next episode. yeah that's, yeah that's the that's next yeah yeah um you know that that's I, I like this one this was really good to kind of differentiate the two but also compare and contrast the two because there's a lot of similarities thrown in there you know because they yeah. blend in together they do. I so I say. guess my last piece, you know, I know you got more to say on this, but like, cause it, it, this, this is why Stu and I say, give yourself enough time, not, not only to do the programs plural, but to, yeah, we're going to run into roadblocks. We're going to, we're going to bite off more than we can chew in a given timeline. But if you're prepping for a special forces program and you're giving yourself 18 months a year or even more in some cases, you now have the room to make some mistakes and learn as you go. And that's the problem is like for the most people that kind of quickly go see a mentor, go see a recruiter and they get in the de delayed entry program and they're like, Oh my God, six months. Now your margin of error has gone down to almost nothing. So you can't make mistakes in training yeah. because now you're locked into a goal, a timeline goal that may not suit um, the timeline that you need. Yeah, that's a good point because a lot of people are just going to get good at getting two buds at this point because they're taking PSTs every week, failing them. You know, that's yeah. the last thing you want to do. But what you want to do is you want to go into that recruiter's office, crush that PST, first time you have to take the PST, and then it's no longer a stressor, right? You can actually train normally for the events that are coming in your future not just PST events that you you need to get good at. You need, you need to learn how to swim. You know, I got guys I'm teaching right now that are delayed entry program that are still learning how to swim. They haven't even yeah. done a 500 yard swim yet. Can't, yeah. finish, right? So that's a journey that is very limited. I mean, they're going to be really lucky to be able to just pass the PST before they ship out to boot camp. Then, you know, they've done nothing else to prepare to get through the events of buds, which are longer runs, yep. rucks, load bearing, boats yep. and logs. And, and, and that's, you know, and giving yourself the timeline does something that you don't even think about. If you train methodically over a year or two, and what Stu is saying is like, training for buds is the ultimate goal. If you're, if you're, if you're under a short timeline, you're forced to only prepare for the PST. In that short timeline, you have not learned to acquire volume. Hmm. But if, you, if you're acquiring volume, learning, teaching your body to acquire, acquire volume over a year or 18 months, you don't have to necessarily, oh my God, now I've got to acquire volume to handle buds. You will master the skills to destroy the PST. And in that patient timeline you've created, you have acquired more and more and more volume every single week. And so then the 26, 27 weeks at Bud, you're like, oh, any given day, you have acquired more volume other than very certain days at Bud's of Hell Week and stuff where you're not depriving yourself naturally. But that's the mindset, folks, whether it's, you know, you're training for the police academy or training for Bud's or, or anything like that. The timeline is so important because that's where you get the volume because you're not going to be able to do it acutely. That's where you get the shin splints, you get the overtraining, you get the yep. stress fractures, you get the, the, the nagging cough and illnesses won't go away in that training. And, and that's detrimental. And that's where you show up to boot camp half foot in the, half foot in the sick bag. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. So in a short answer, 
The answer is it depends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the answer is, yeah, listen, listen to the podcast, give yourself some time, be patient. Um, and this isn't about perfection, folks. It's just about progress. Yes, absolutely. And you're not going to be a bodybuilder if you do a hypertrophy cycle, right? No. And again, just the last sort of thing is like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, what a, why do you do this? And like, shouldn't you train if you're, if you're trying to get maximum hypertrophy, shouldn't you train the same body part twice a week? If you're a professional bodybuilder? Yes. Yes. If you're training for buds, no. Yeah. Or good. ranger school or whatever. Yeah, it's just that's good. Be Very good. Because point. You, you have to differentiate the two. And that's where it's like the beauty, the, 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 the magnificence of powerlifting as a sport, the magnificence of bodybuilding as a sport. And like what we're trying to get you guys to be kind of like decathletes there's, there's some overlay, overlap, but those are different paths at some point, and you've got to recognize that. Yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. One last thing, um, because th these programs, like Jeff just said, you know, that we both create, aren't for the guy trying to be a power lifter. They're not for the guy trying to be a bodybuilder. They're not for the guy who's trying to win calisthenics contests. Yeah. Right? yeah. They're for the guy that's trying to get good at everything. So they have the foundation to be able to, and the durability to be able to handle, you know, the selections in their future. Yep. So it does not look like yeah. a typical power program. It does not look like a typical hypertrophy bodybuilding program. You bet. Because those are ultimately folks, those are sports. They're fantastic yep. sports. And, yes. that, and that's like even CrossFit in and of itself it is trained a certain way because it's now, in my opinion, it is a sport, right? Oh, sure. Sure. And, and like football players train a certain way because it's the, the sport demands it. Yes. The, the profession you're choosing in the tactical space is already said, Hey, you have to be good at good and even great at some of these things. We don't want to send you just down the bodybuilding road because for example, or powerlifting, whatever it may be, because you'll, you'll get to a point and go, this isn't developing me the way I need to. Yeah. So Treat it like a sport, but treat, treat buds or the, you know, the viewpoint of what you're trying to do. It's a sport. So it's that you're a decathlete, right? Mixed with yeah. a swimmer, mixed with a whatever, right? And there's yep. moments of maximal force you need to produce and moments of maximal strength and a lot of endurance, of course, right? So yeah. decathlete. Yeah, that's a good point. So let, let, let's name everything for him. We got um, cardiovascular endurance, which is running, swimming, rucking. Yep. Muscle stamina, high repetitions of everything, yep. strength and power. Mm -hmm. You have flexibility, mobility, just to lick your wounds every day. And then you also have some speed and agility, you know, with yep. obstacle courses and, you know, things like it's that. It's all in there. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we want you guys to be diverse. That's why you see Stu, what he does, he cycles his programs. You know, you see him doing hill, hill runs. You see him doing sprints, sandbag stuff, calisthenics, right? Again, if, if you, if you took the components of what Stu and I do, we're using the same components. We, even if they're in a different order, they're yes. in a very systematic order to yield a very specific result. Yeah. The way I like to say this, and this, this is a great ending. It's uh, same music, just different choreography. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, totally. It can be any stage too. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So, Awesome, Stu. I appreciate it, man. No, man, I thank you very much and hope you enjoyed this uh, tactical fitness report. We'll be doing others soon, so stay tuned.